will have an opportunity for you to do that. <laughs> Good morning. morning. Happy Mother's Day to those who are moms or grandmas. We celebrate them too. A couple of announcements before we get started. Church council meeting is Wednesday, May 17th at 6.30. Graduate recognition is on Sunday, May 21st. There's also a new member class on May 21st following worship. And then there's a new member reception on Sunday, May 28th, which is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Plus, we get to meet the goats. Yes, there will be baby goats um, on Pentecost following worship. Um, Are there any other announcements? I think you should mention the land's retirement I was waiting to do that. Okay, <laughs> okay good. Luann, I get to uh, again. Sorry. Sure. Um, I want everybody here to know the church family that Luann has hit another milestone. <laughs> <laughs> she has officially retired from Senior Connections as of Friday last week. And after 22 and a half years of doing what she did, there's a huge hole to fill. We, we are attempting to do that with our new gal. She's going to have a lot of work to do. But I want everybody here to know that Luann is a, well, you know, she's a huge community member. She's very dedicated to what goes on here. And as an advocate for those 60 and older, she's now working for herself, actually. <laughs> Thank but, you. Know, you. Give her a big hand. She's just a big hand.
got an idea how we're going to try to get her without her knowing why she's coming here. I was going to try to have her come here and show me what she has done over the years. So hopefully we can get her here next Sunday. That's my plan. Wonderful. Any other announcements? Okay. Hopefully I'm not going to be too loud. I know. <laughs> All right. So I invite you to join me in the opening liturgy. And if you would respond to the bold portions as they are printed in your bulletin. While our spiritual ancestors were living in Egypt, they wondered, How long must we endure this oppression? When they left Egypt and followed Moses in the desert, they wondered, Is this really a heavy our whole life in Egypt? When we feel the urge to make a change in our lives, we wonder, How much longer can I go on? When we consider the cost of change, we wonder, What is the cost if I stay the same? Then the love of the divine reminds us, You too are a child of God. You can emerge to a new life again and again. Amen. If you will join me in our first hymn of the day, which is, What Feast of Love? Hymn number 487.
Well, who's ready for some entertainment? Our children's message today is going to be a little weird. So, it has been fun taking this blanket and seeing it, not just for what it is, but for what it can be. Today we're transforming this blanket into, is there a drum roll right here? Excellent. A stage. This is going to be a stage today. So I will set this down. Here is our wonderful little stage. Um, a stage can be an exciting place where stories are told, where songs are shared. It can be a moving experience for the audience and rewarding for the performers. But just about every performer has times when they get at least a little bit nervous. It's a sign that we really care about what we're doing. And we want to do it as well as can be. But when those nerves keep us from even taking the stage in the first place, God wants us to spend our lives spreading our wings, not waiting in the wings. So, as I do this, I'm not going to step on it with my shoes, Pastor, so just so you know, if she's watching. Um, I'm okay with some things on stage, um, maybe dancing. I don't sing. If that's written in here, but I'm not going to do that to you. Um, so, you know, I can do a birthday dance, you know, whatever. It takes a lot of courage to come up and do something like that. Um, obviously, I don't get too nervous when I talk in public. If it were a bigger crowd, maybe I'd have to take a little razzle down. Um, but when it comes to dancing or singing, my whole body just freezes. And I feel like I'm stuck. I feel very awkward. So even though dancing really doesn't phase me, I'm still uncoordinated. <laughs> and I still feel like the second that I start dancing, everyone sees me, they're going to point at me, and they're going to laugh. Um, so I do get sort of shy, I mean, I, I can do that, but I know everybody here, so everybody knows how weird I am. Um, and the sad thing is, is that I really enjoy dancing. I mean, back when I was younger, I had clothing days. Um, I want to dance, but maybe I could leave behind my fears for just a few seconds. And if I had friends or spouses, that would join me. <laughs> Will you, my husband, come up if you would like to come up and join in the fun too? That's okay. Yep. Ah, excellent. Oh, you'll find out. <laughs> you need to be on the blanket. You have to take shoes off. Three times, okay? So it goes, um, na 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 
And so it is time to leave it behind. The Israelites that left Egypt were aching for freedom, and yet when faced with the disorientation of all that was new and familiar, many began crying to go back. Letting go of the past requires deep trust in God, who has promised to be with us always. Our reading today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16. And I'm just going to apologize ahead of time. It is the entire chapter. <clears throat> the whole congregation of Israelites set out from Elam and came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we, that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as the frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it each of you, as each of you needs, an omer per person, according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who had gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed, and Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until morning, and it became wormy and rotten. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, as much as they needed. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much food, two omers apiece. When all of the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath of the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil, and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning, just as Moses had commanded them, and it did not rot, and there were no maggots in it. 
Moses said, Eat it today, for today is the Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. The Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you food for two days. Each of you stay where you are. Do not leave your place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The Israelites called it manna. It was like a white coriander seed, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer of it be kept throughout your generations in order that they may see the food with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put an omer of manna in it and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. Just as the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the covenant for safekeeping. The Israelites ate manna 40 years until they came to a, a um, habitable land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. That is a lot. I need to drink a lot. So have you ever done something in your life that made you step outside of your comfort zone? <clears throat> I do it a lot. Maybe doing the chicken dance in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> or performing a solo in choir. Public speaking. Even making a career change. I'm going to give you three words that are a beautiful and elegant way to describe how the most worthwhile things in life involve risk. Gulp, leap, soar. The fear or pressure of whatever you have with you before a solo or a new job can be terrifying. You may just want to give up despite all of your preparation and work, and you might be struggling with demons telling you lies about your shortcomings. The first step is not to ignore that reality, but to take a gulp. Then the day comes. Time to take all of yourself with you and walk out on that stage for your solo. Time to start your first day as a new leader. Time to leave the comfort of your home you've known for years and reestablish yourself further than you've ever been before. You are on the path of greatness. So, leap. It's only after you take the leap, vulnerable as you are, that now you soar. I would bet that many of you here and for those online have stories of pressure and fear involved with putting yourselves out there. You took the risk, the leap, and you soared. What fear might paralyze the butterfly before it's made in flight? To have undergone such a transformation from a crawling caterpillar to a stationary chrysalis. What frame of reference could a butterfly have for flying? The, blood of the butterfly's wings have dried and are fully extended, so it's time to let go of the branch it clings to. In Exodus 16, we find the Israelites are complaining. We're in the middle of their wilderness wandering. After the plagues, after the splitting of the Red Sea, after Miriam's song, the Israelites are liberated. They're free. Their oppressors have been defeated. But they are finding life difficult. If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. 
In our reading of Exodus, the Israelites encounter some of their first difficulties that were not in the regular rhythm of suffering to which they had become accustomed during their slavery in Egypt. One question is worth exploring. Was it the hardship of the wilderness that led the Israelites to complain, or was it, or was it that the difficulty was new? They didn't have food. There is a fear that can grow within us in response to the unknown. Perhaps the Israelite people in their fear thought that the suffering they could recognize was better than the suffering of the unknown. God gave the Israelites a unique opportunity to learn how to trust God's provision. In their Egyptian bondage, they had to sit by flesh pots for food. In the wilderness, God caused manna to literally appear with the morning dew and quail to come right into the camp. In Egypt, the Israelites had something they recognized and were able to eat their fill. But they had no concept of what awaited them after liberation. The land into which God was sending them, as well as the food God provided them, was so different and yet so much more than they had in Egypt. But they didn't know that until they experienced it. The butterfly only knew the stems and the leaves it crawled on and feasted upon as a caterpillar. This moment just before it takes flight is so crucial as wings are unfurled, but also because proboscis, which is the tube that the butterfly feeds through, is still forming in this precious time of hanging out. Important things are happening at this moment. When it's ready, the butterfly experiences the full reality for which it was made, flight. The new food for the butterfly is the sweetness of flower nectar drawn up through its feeding tube rather than chewing on a fibrous green of him leaves and stems. It lets go of the familiar and emerges into the new. The Israelites only knew the certainty and regularity, regularity of slavery, but in this crucial moment after liberation, after entering into the land, God is sending them to inhabit. God provides the Israelites a taste of something so much greater than they would ever have had in their past. Dare I say that our wistful remembering of the bygone days of our churches is similar to the Israelites' hesitation to embrace the newness into which God is calling them? Are our congregations clinging to the stem like a newly emerged butterfly from its chrysalis? Fearing of leaping into the future, they don't know as they try to desperately recreate the success and vitality they do know from their already told story. What flight into newness is God calling us to take? What is God calling us to leave behind in our own lives so that we can journey forward into the life God is calling us to live? Gulp, leap, soar. Amen. <laughs>
Rico. Please join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 217 of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand. I will say all who hunger and you will respond with taste and see the grace eternal so again for those that are here I will say all who hunger and for those online as well you will respond with taste and see the grace eternal With reverence for the earth, those in need, and the whole human family, let us offer our prayers to God. Equip the saints of God for ministry. Build up and unite the body of Christ for the sake of mission in the world. All who hunger, grant wisdom to all who lead nations and hold public office. Give them humility to speak the truth in love. All who hunger, rain down your providence on all creation. May the bounty of the earth provide enough food for all. All who hunger, feed the hungry, sustain the weary, challenge the complacent, and heal the sick and brokenhearted. All who hunger, Give us this day our daily bread and what we truly need each day. Make us mindful of the needs of others. All who hunger, sustain us with the bread of life until we join all of the saints around your bountiful table in glory. All who hunger, Receive our hopes and prayers, O God of mercy, for great is your faithfulness in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share in peace. Be well in Christ. Next, I invite you to, sh to uh, join me in the Thanksgiving of the Word, which is found on page 220 of your hymnal. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. I invite you to recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
now receive the benediction. Now go into your lives, leaving behind what no longer fits, and trusting in the promise that yes, transformation really is possible. Assured by God who created you, the Christ who is raising you, and the spirit that will unbind you, be with you now and always. Blessed be. Amen. Our ending song is Take My Life and Let It Be, hymn number 583. <laughs>